Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about retro video games. It's been a while since I reviewed an NES game, so today I'm talking about an interesting combination of point-and-click adventure and brawler. It's Nightshade. Listen to this. That's what my Nintendo tapes are supposed to sound like, right? Nightshade was developed by Beam Software and released for the NES in 1992. Though it seems like something that would have been developed for some kind of home computer system and ported over, nope, it was only for the NES. The game takes place in Metro City, a place full of crime and corruption and now controlled by a crime lord who calls himself Sutek. Only one man stood against him, the superhero Vortex. Sadly, Vortex was killed. But then, another man, who was really just a nerd and a fan of Vortex, decided to take up the fight as the titular hero, Nightshade. When we first meet Nightshade, things aren't looking so hot for him. Sutek has him tied to a chair with a bomb nearby set to explode. Then, like any overconfident monologuing supervillain, Sutek leaves. This is where the game starts for the player, as they need to quickly find a way to escape before being blown to smithereens. I've always been of the opinion that the NES is not an ideal platform for point-and-click adventure games. The controller just doesn't do them justice. However, Nightshade manages to pull this off better than most. The game makes the most of the limited buttons available, and I found myself getting comfortable with the UI pretty quickly. You move Nightshade around the screen with the D-pad. Hovering your cursor over something and pressing A looks at it, while pressing B operates it. The less used commands can be accessed by pressing Select, which gives options like Pick Up, Talk, Use, Inventory, and even Jump, which will come in handy to hop over dangerous ground. The only thing I really didn't get used to was the speed at which the cursor moves. Boy, is it slow. At the bottom of the screen, you get a close-up of the hero, his face obscured by his fedora and upturned trench coat collar. You also have meters for health, which is pretty self-explanatory, and popularity, which you can increase by doing good deeds. There are some places you can't go, or people who won't talk to you if your popularity isn't high enough. The game offers over 50 screens for you to explore. Most only have a couple things that you can interact with, and you'll want to look at them all to find things like hidden keys and switches which let you progress. I'm impressed by the lack of pixel hunting here. There are some bricks out on the street which can be hard to spot at first, but once you find one and realize that objects marked with a V should be interacted with, they become much easier to spot. Some screens have enemies you need to fight, and there are a number of bosses you need to defeat in order to complete the game. I like the genre mashup, but the combat wasn't really my favorite, and I found the pace of it at odds with the adventure part of the game. Combat takes place directly on the screen you're on, and you can move back and forth, punch, kick, duck, and jump. The UI will also change so you can see enemy health. Enemies move surprisingly fast, considering how slow Nightshade moves for most of the game. There are a few different kinds of enemies, and each has their own pattern and weaknesses. Some need to be jumped over and hit in the back. One boss requires you to bait him into stunning himself before he'll be open to attack. I found combat quite challenging, and it wasn't until I started making use of jumping over enemies and ducking a lot that I started doing okay at these fights. If you take too much damage in one fight, it can put you in a real tight spot for the next. When you lose all your health, you die, which brings us to one of the cooler aspects of the game. Rather than the usual game over screen, Sutek, overconfident as always, puts you in a death trap, and then leaves. There's a way to get out of these, though they are reliant on both correct timing and positioning. If you fail, then it's really game over. But, if you escape, you get to continue on, with all your items and a full health bar. So in this way, the game has continues, though there are only four of them. When you get to the fifth and final death trap, there is no escape. 
This great take on the continue system and the overall tone that combines noir with superheroes is what makes the game shine. The writing is also surprisingly good and quite funny. I like that the game's introduction sets up the story for you, rather than just dumping you into the world like some other NES adventures. You also get a real conclusion at the end. Even if you die prematurely, you get a little scene and a note on how far you progressed, rather than just a game over screen. As you talk to people out in the world, they'll call you Lampshade and question where your leotards are. Sutek and his minions are all quite sassy towards you, and the exclamation, great quivering enigmas with a side salad and a light tartar sauce, gave me a laugh. When you reach the final fight of the game, Sutek reveals that in his new world, game shows will run on TV 24 hours a day and flares will come back into style. This made me question if Nightshade's quest to defeat him was one I really wanted to support. I love game shows. The game is very open, you can explore most places right from the start as long as you're willing to get in a few fights. It also does a pretty good job telegraphing what you should be looking out for. As long as you talk to everyone and look at everything, you'll get hints about things you should be doing. However, some things are not that obvious, like certain items making some enemies weaker or scaring them off entirely. So there is some trial and error in terms of how to succeed. A game like this could really use saves, so I encourage the use of save states. You can heal yourself a limited number of times in a secret hideout, and you do have the four continues, but that may not be enough. In addition to taking damage in combat, there's also occasional environmental dangers, like steam spouts in the sewers, rats, or defense turrets around enemy strongholds. In terms of aesthetics, Nightshade looks and sounds pretty good. The music is jazzy and conveys the tone of each area. While out on the street, things are more chill and laid back. While in dangerous areas, the tempo picks up and contrasts bassy notes with more high-pitched sounds. The main theme in particular really captures the noir feeling. Sound effects are also good, and when you're in combat, the punching sound effects are sufficiently weighty. The game also makes great use of the NES's limited color palette. Nightshade himself is mostly orange, but with enough use of light and shadow to make him distinct. I also love that he has an idle pose. I'm always a sucker for those. Most areas look great. The sewers make excellent use of dithering to give real texture to the stone columns that you can walk behind and moldy looking green walls. While you're outside, the sky always looks great by using multiple shades of blue, so it never looks flat. There's one area of the city that uses that awful magenta color a little too much, but hey, they only have so many colors to choose from. If you pay attention to the startup screen of the game, you'll notice that the full title is Nightshade Part 1, The Claws of Sutek. This was maybe a little optimistic on the part of the devs, as a part 2 would never happen. It's a shame, really, as this game ended up being quite impressive. A sequel on Super Nintendo could have been a winner. Nightshade is a very charming game. The combat does take a little getting used to and may be a little out of place, but as an adventure game, especially on the NES, it succeeds. The writing and setting are a lot of fun, there's no shortage of clues to let you know what you should be looking out for, and it makes the most of the limited options offered by the NES controller. Nightshade is a game with a lot of style and is definitely worth checking out. If you want to see more, check out my review of Deja Vu, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.